and welcome. Uh, we're doing Crimson Vow Draft number 11 uh, today. Got uh, enough for three more drafts actually, with any luck I'll be able to get all three done. Okay, we have uh, a Dream Shackle Geist Blue Spirit 3-1 Flyer. Quite a heavy commitment to blue because it's two blue and one. At the beginning of combat you can tap target creature or target creature doesn't untap during next untap step. So that seems pretty good, pretty cool to be honest. We definitely want one of those. I am uh, of course drafting for my collection here. I'll go ahead and look at these blue cards first. So we've got Alchemist's Retrieval. Nice little bounce spell, Unscattered Thoughts. A uh, bit of card draw, bit of card selection, puts things in the graveyard. And then the uncommons, so we've got Radiant Grace. So this uh, gives you, yeah, it's cheap. Gives you one power. Uh, vigilance. If the creature dies, then you, get, you curse your opponent. They're... Um, Creatures come into play tapped. It doesn't seem, you know, huge to me, really. Not a big deal at all. Magma Pamela is kind of cool. Big, A big chunky blocker on the ground. Uh, Markov Retribution. So you need a vampire for this to do anything. That's quite limiting. Otherwise it's not bad. If it's good good in a vampire deck, um, I guess. Uh Adamant Well, it's a good combat trick. So I'm just thinking there's uh there's definitely a white blue spirits deck. I quite like Courier Bat. This of, this goes in an Ors of Life Gain deck. So maybe it's not quite what we're looking for to go with the Geist, but maybe we're just I suppose we're just trying to pick first five packs, we're just trying to pick the best card from each pack and then we'll see where we, we are. Pirate Spawn, quite expensive. It's gonna trade off with um, the six six green creature and get value. The one one vampire problem. Uh Weaver of Blossoms gives you a bit of um bit of ramp, bit of mana fixing. That might be this might be a good one to go for if we don't know what we're doing. It's um gives us a bit of flexibility there. And Wolf Strike is a decent removal card in green. I've got to admit, I don't know what I'm doing yet, so uh, I know there's, um, I'm thinking in terms of the white-blue deck, just mainly because I played against one recently with a Brine Coma, and that has payoffs for auras. So that would be an argument for taking the Radiant Grace. But I just, I'm not very impressed with the card. It's not that amazing, to be honest. I think, I, I like the idea of Weaver of Blossoms maybe enabling other strategies or splashing cards so we'll just take that see what we get okay white flyer griffwing cavalry and that can give yeah it's got training on it it can give flying to another attacking creature that seems pretty good Uh, we not really know there's there's kind of a there's definitely a white a decent white blue deck archetype. We could go with sort of white blue flyers as well, that might be quite good. Honeymoon Hearse, is this any good at all? Gotta to tap two creatures and you get to get a a five five trample. That seems okay. That's I suppose if you you have tokens. Uh, Marco Purify is a good enabler for the uh, life gain deck. Uh, 
Um, yeah, pretty good card. Let's you let's you draw off your life gain. I'm temp I'd be tempted by this one. I've got in the commons noble gas begala. It's another spirit. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I like the sharpshooter because that can block uh, flyers. So we don't. We still don't know where we're going really. We um, we could go for the Griffin Cavalry for sort of blue white flyers. We could take Markov Purifier because uh, Ors of Life Gain is definitely a deck. I think yeah. Well, that's probably the strongest card here. Okay, shuffle gra cards from graveyard into library, and then you get a look at the top four cards. Pretty good. This is for the life gain deck, the minister. Cradle of safety can protect your flyers, and cruel witness is is just really good, I think. Uh, that would go with my plan for my flyers. Uh, Desperate Farmer would go with a Purifier. So uh, the one I th I like the most I hear is uh, Cruel Witness, I think. Okay, Frenzy Devil's Edgar's Awakening. Heron of Hope seems really good. You can give it lifelink. That goes with sort of white blue flyers, but also the white black life gain deck this cradle of safety so I just uh, got got destroyed by cradle of safety in my last uh, match uh, they, had, they managed to draw two of these and it stopped my uh, two removal spells and they just won just one with their flyer um, heron of hope seems good Okay, Courier Bat goes with the life gain deck. So yeah, we'll tr we'll kind of I think we'll end up making two different decks. It looks like. So unholy efficient, it's, it's kind of good. It sort of uh, grows if you've got spare mana. Got the uh, an exploit zombie. I think I, uh, I'll take that zombie. Piercing Light is a small removal spell. Could be alright. Blue zombie, blue combat trick. Okay, looks like we're just definitely not playing red particularly. Um, and maybe not green. Uh, otherwise, we'd get we'd go for this sharpshooter because it's a pretty good idea. Persistent specimen could work in a uh, a deck with exploit. So that kind of goes that pairs up with a mind leech ghoul. I think we'll take the retrieval here, and we'll get another mind leech ghoul. Why not? Cradle of safety to protect our flyers and another one. Noble Gas Beguiler is also good though. I think I want to try and I want to try and copy what uh, what what my opponent did in my last game. So I'll I'll get 
pick up a couple of Cradle of Safeties. Okay, we get the Creepy Puppeteer. Uh, good red card, but we're not playing red. Sideboard that. I think we'll sideboard Weaver of Blossoms. It looks like we're not playing green. Right, got a Skulker. Um, unblockable, if it's attacking alone. That seems good. So, yeah, I think that's ahead at the moment. Definitely. Drog Skull Infantry is alright. Heron of Hope's good. That's a, another Heron of Hope, that would be. I feel like a, a dude that's just unblockable might be really good, though. Okay, all right. Now the good news this for this rare, I already have four copies, so I can just ignore that. We can bounce things back to the hand. Heron of Hope again. Wow, I've got Lantern Bearer, so I've seen how good this is in other decks. And we've got a counter spell as well. Uh, another Heron of Hope as well. They seem to be just flying around. I think I never seem to get Lantern Bearer. Uh, so I want to give it a try. Okay, Re Resistance Squad. Yeah, we've, uh, we don't have any humans. So, I don't know if we're going to get a sudden late run of humans. If we do, then it's good. Wretched Throng. It's like, will we get more Wretched Throngs or will we get more humans is the question. I guess we'll take the uh, resistance squad here. Okay, wash away. It's uh, basically a counter spell. Fear of death is quite good. That's another counter spell there. Uh, I think I want the wanderlight spirit. I want another three drop flyer. Okay, interesting, another wretched throng there, another curry about there. I think maybe we're, we might be giving up on the life gain plan. Yeah, the trouble is we've got a bit of a little bit of exploit, a bit of life gain, and a bit of uh, protect the flyer kind of gaming going on. I kind of need to decide what I'm doing. Potentially, this sort of gets good if you if we pick up a late brine coma. Um, not sure if we're getting a bunch of wretched throngs. I think I'll go for the nurturing presence here. Okay, now we've got a few options. So Noble Gas Bikyla is quite good. Binding Geist is quite good. Get, might be able to get away with a 5-drop. B 
We could almost go mono blue if we can get enough blue cards. I think I want to go Binding Geist. Okay, yeah, so we need a creature with a plus one, plus one. Not bothered about the Shield Basher too much. Could try the Fear of Death, that might be a good one. There's the brine coma finally. Okay. No, okay, this is def okay, we're definitely going blue white. I think we let's forget the black part of the deck. Let's see how many cards we actually need to make a deck. We read we'll read the brine coma card. So it's um aura spells become important. Uh, our Steel Cloud Spirit is pretty good for the deck, so we'll grab that one. So yeah, we still need seven cards for the deck. I think we can take this counter spell, that's pretty good. Okay, we'll take that for the collection. Fear of Death, sure. Yeah, we won't main deck that. Olivia's Attendance, yeah, I'll take that. Um, yeah, obviously there's fantastic cards here, but... Uh, the co collection comes first here. Demonic Bargain. That's a terrible card, but uh, yeah, collection comes first. Okay, well, Bioloom Egg is very interesting. Uh, but it's for the uh, Sacrifice deck. Right, so it's Nurturing Presence, Piercing Light, Binding Geist. I think I like the Binding Geist most of all, because it is a creature and then an aura. So it kind of does double duty a bit. Right, but then we get Diver Scarb. Heron Blessed Geist. Uh, we are making potentially 1-1s, one which we could sacrifice. Also Disturb creature, uh, creatures that have Disturb. I think we have... This is the only human we have, the Resistance Squad. So I think we just cut the Resistance Squad right now. Just so we have a better idea of how many things we need. Everything else seems kind of playable. Syncopate's quite good, I suppose. So yeah, Her and Blessed Geist is maybe more in line with the theme of the deck, but this is uh this is removal. Which might be pretty good to have. I think syncopate might wheel around. Um, yeah, I think I believe in Sc Diver Scarb. I think it's a pretty good card, even if you're not playing a zombie deck. Heirloom. Nurturing Presence. So, yeah, let's, let's grab that. So a nice late uh, child of the pack there. I guess, yeah, another Cruel Witness is pretty awesome. Travelling Minister, a bit of life gain. 
That's for the life gain deck, I would say. I think maybe we take another Cradle of Safety. Maybe three is over the t a bit over the top. Alchemist Retrievals may be a bit more useful in more situations. We can take that counter spell. And then we hit, we've hit 23 cards. That's a nice late Brian Coma. Cool. Right, fear of death. Uh, yes, please. Scout thoughts for a bit of card draw. Another nurturing presence, I guess. Shield basher. Okay. Okay. Okay, so one small issue here is we have hardly any white cards at all. I think I cut the Shield Basher straight away. Uh, I don't think we need Dreadlight Monstrosity in this deck. Okay, I don't know. I don't think there's any really easy cuts at this point. Um, although, okay, the easiest cuts to do might be cheap white things because could do something like that. And then I don't only need to really splash white a little bit. Could go dreadlight monstrosity. Right, I think, uh, but I think I'll call that end of part one and have a little think about uh, about the deck. Uh, thanks for watching so far. And uh, welcome back. So, um, yeah, we've I've, uh, come up with the deck. It's sort of, it's almost mono blue, so we are. I think we'll be okay with seven planes and ten islands. Um, it could be a bit difficult to cast. Dream Shacklegeist, one turn three, um, and yeah, or getting Nurturing Presence on turn two. In fact, yeah, with seven sources, let's see, turn four, we should have a ninety percent chance of casting, casting our uh, white spells. Uh, and it's like probably turn five for the uh, for the dream shacklegeist for getting double blue, but that's okay. Um, so a few a few choices I made here. So yeah, I've cut dreadlight monstrosity because I mean it's just a big creature wheel that uh, can be unblockable. Our, our, our thing is kind of. About f it's all about flying and uh, evasion already. So I think we don't need a Dreadlight Monstrosity. Heron of Hope is uh, it's another flyer. It's a life gain card, and it's it's in white. So I don't think we need this card. I've replaced this with Gutter Skulker, which does something interesting. Just gets to be unblockable. So I think Gutter Skulker might be better here in the four drop slot. Um, and I managed to fit in two nurturing presences, but um, not the third one. I just I kind of prefer the other cards. 
Uh, I guess Lantern Bearer seems a bit silly because everything flies already, but um, I guess it's a turn one play. It's It also boosts things by plus one, plus one, which can be important. It's, it's an extra aura. But yeah, I wasn't I didn't feel happy like dropping a fear of death. I thought these things are probably going to keep me alive. Uh, nurturing presence is kind of not a nice extra thing to have, rather than being crucial. So I thought we'll try and play two of those. Anyway, um, yeah, I think we'll just go for it. See how we do. So I've not tried a a, a Brian Coma deck uh, before. Uh, see how we get on. We have an opponent. Cool, we got blue and white. Uh, we got the Brian Coma for turn three. Got protection, the protection spell. Got a bounce spell. Now, opponent is going first. That. Feel like that's always not so good if you're trying to rely on counter spells. But we'll see how we get on. Okay, interesting. Of course, he gets to scry with that. Uh. Uh, I think we bounce this. Before he sacrifices it. That's my feeling. I'll copy that. Uh, copy it and we'll counter it. That's potentially a 4-4 creature dealt with. Now we can take a risk. We can play the Brian Coma. Yeah, I think we play the Brian Coma here. It makes a creature anyway. So that's quite nice. Um, it's the Wanderlight Spirit actually. That's a better target for us to protect. So, okay, that's got exploit. Nice exploit deck he's got, actually. That's exploiting itself, so he's going to get a zombie out of it, which is pretty cool. And he gets to draw a scry and draw a card. So, he's building up a bit of a team here. I think I drop an island here. Okay. Uh, nurturing presence, what does this do? Yeah, it's kind of in it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Oh you can cast it on a Brian Coma as well. Plus one, plus one until end of turn. I think we want to play a Wanderlight Spirit though. And we will swing in with 1-1. One, one. Kind of learning how to play this deck as we go. I think my opponent's got quite a good attack he can do here. 
so they might just simply outrace me. That's the uh, that is the problem I have. Got a lot of little things that nibble away at the opponent. It might not be quick enough. Uh, now. Does Brian Coma block? Is that a good idea? Uh, or do we cast it on one light spirit? I think uh, I'll do no blocks. Don't think I need to block yet. Over to my turn. So he's through with uh, that was four damage he got through with. I think maybe having more islands out is important. I think I'm going to get to six islands. Um, so nurturing presence. You see, I feel like we. Uh, Probably wanted to do this on the Wonder Light Spirit, but I'll cast this on the Brian Coma. I'll swing in like that for five. Oh, Garoff gives everything flying. Nice. Well, that kind of... Uh... Gives him quite an advantage. Okay, my turn. Yeah, that is a... Uh, that is a rare, incidentally. Okay. Uh, I think we want to hold on to one land here. Okay. Let's tap the Geralt. I want to swing in with Brian Coma here and Wonder Light Spirit. That's the idea. Okay. I think kill the zombie token. Uh, we won't use Cradle of Safety. Undying Malice. Okay. Uh... Feels like we could Cradle of Safety to kill both of these. That becomes a th yeah three three flyer. I think maybe this is a good move, but I'm not sure. <laughs> but 
but now I am vulnerable to removal, I guess. Uh, end the turn. But maybe that was a greedy move. Okay. Okay, Brian Coma. Right, so the good news is Doom Descent doesn't fly. Um, I think we'll Brian Coma our spirit here and I'll make another flyer. I'll play one planes, I think. Let's tap a creature. Tap you. And we could just attack like that. Because Dream Shackle Geist is pretty valuable. Yeah, he, this guy really managed to get the uh, the zombie deck. Got some good hits here. Skull, Scarband, Garalf. Oh, he's got two zombies from doing that. That's amazing. Because of the Doom Dissenter, is the second zombie. Nice. So I feel like this guy's got the perfect deck to counter my deck, unfortunately. Uh, right, I think I want to... Fear of Death, Repository Scarb. Good, two lands off the top. Dream Shacklegeist can tap something down, but Wanderlight Spirit will get murdered by a couple of the 2 2 zombies, unfortunately. Tap. Oh, wait, no. Uh. We want Wanderlight Spirit to trade off for something significant. We'll tap down a regular zombie, so he has to block with something significant. I think we keep the Dream Shackle Geist here. interesting just running into the deck that's the perfect counter to the small flyers deck oh yeah um, that's true yeah he's got the Garalf also does that which is just nice isn't it the good thing is I guess not every deck is going to have Garalf visionary stitcher and an army of two two flyers to beat my one one flyers uh, but there you go. So yeah, um, Fear of Death, pretty, pretty hopeless as well against an exploit deck. Especially with Garalf. But there you go. Okay. I mean, my 1-1 one, one guys aren't doing a hell, a whole hell of a lot. I think chucking two in front of Arch Ghoul of Thraban, not a bad idea. I can take three. So yeah, he's got Cradle of Safety as well. Two can play at that game. Sure. Nice. Uh, 
And that gets flying now as well. Why not? So one light spirit will f face plant into that guy. I think I'm just on the defense now, so... Um, I guess he's a 4-3 flyer. He could uh, maybe not untap this time. Maybe the skull scarp. Right. He has Undying Malice, even if something does die as well. So yeah, I guess welcome to Platinum. This is <laughs> this is not what the Platinum Zombies deck looks like. Okay, <clears throat> Archgul of Thraben. We know he. Uh, has Undying Malice, so we can't kill this thing. Uh, I think and whenever these die, he gets to he kind of gets to win and draw cards, which is nice for him. Uh, we'll double yeah, but we'll take out these guys. Obviously, he can protect his arch ghoul. And the card we need is the uh, Diver Scarb to maybe get rid of Geralf. Hobbled Lancer, yeah. Okay. He invested quite a lot into um, bouncing and then countering his Bioloom Egg. I don't know if that was the right choice, but I guess I would have died a lot quicker. Um, right, yeah. So that is a dude. Let's not have this on tap. After this game, I'm quite happy cutting a fear of death for for the uh, the other nurturing presence. Uh, so he's got undying malice. Um, he gets the plus one plus one, I guess. After after he flips, so let's uh, let's try and block that. Sure. Sure. All the fun. Should get a four four. At the end of turn, that's how that how Bioloom Eggs works. Keep getting back the undy undying malice, and nothing ever dies. Nice. Uh, fear of death. Uh, yep, sure. Let's put it on this guy. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, binding Geist. Um. Okay, not much I can do here. So, uh, what did I just? I just did that. Yeah. So. So yeah, another just ultimate kind of archetype. Okay, yeah, that's dead. Can't even kill any of his guys, and um, they've all got flying. Okay, so can we block? Yeah, we can block something on the ground. We'll block the serpent. Um, is that a zombie there? Don't know if we want to put that in the graveyard. Because uh, we're taking... I think 8 damage. Right, good game. I mean, I say we can't run into Geralf, Visionary Stitcher again, but... Um, you know, I'm sure there are other things just as bad. But, uh, yeah, I, felt, I feel a bit... Uh, Slightly unlucky. <laughs> I just chose. Yeah, I, I just got completely countered uh, by that strategy. I'm going to cancel that. I said I was going to. No, it's gone straight into the game. That's okay. Whatever. I was going to drop a fear of death for a uh, the, the white enchantment. Okay, well we've got blue and white. A couple of bounce spells. Diver scarb. It's not very good. can buy some time by bouncing his creatures. Uh, I'm not going to mulligan. Just, I just don't really believe in mulligans, unfortunately. Okay. Not, well, not when you've got the, put the right mana. Feel like you may top deck what you need. I'd rather have you know have to top deck my creatures than my than the right lands. But yeah, we've got the double blue problem obviously here. We we've hit all the uh, planes, which is uh, occasionally going to be a problem. damage through. Weaver of Blossoms. I'm okay doing Siphon Essence on that. Okay. Uh, we, we need these land drops because we need to get to 5 mana. Um, blood token. Yep. Okay, it's only a 1-4, it's not too scary. Uh, let's pop the blood token. We've got to discard something. Um, yeah, let's discard a bounce spell. Okay. Right turn. Okay. Oh, I've well, got a creature we can play here. I'd like to sacrifice this to the Diver Scar, but that could be quite good. Oh yeah, that uh, of course boosts up. Okay, sure, Wolf Strike that. Why not? We'll hit five mana. Unfortunately, four of them are planes. 
we can do one thing. So fear of death on the sharpshooter seems good. Hey, both Brian Comas went into the graveyard. That's interesting. Now we just need a creature to cast them on. Of course, he's going to keep getting trained up, which is quite funny. Okay. Oh, look. We did it. We actually hit an island. And... Um, We need double blue to do anything, which is a problem because we're going to get slammed by Pyre Spawn for six damage next turn. But we we really really need a creature. Uh, okay, well we could put we could binding Geist the wolf, and then we can. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's do that. It's not good. Great. And um, now we can prevent the damage, or we can delay the pass one for another turn. Ha ha! Perfect. He has paid the mana. Bounce the power spawn. Wow, we even have three blue. That's amazing. Okay. Uh, so we can actually play the Dream Shackle Geist. and protect it. Which is pretty awesome. Cool, a braid, exactly what I wanted you to do. To got another a braid. Nice. Okay, uh, let's not have that on tap. So we're doing doing some controlly things. It's kind of interesting. That's the pyre spawn. Okay, we have a steel clad spirit. Uh, right, I feel like I want that in play. Um, we could dive a scab and sacrifice the spirit. This could be a chance to just unload my Brian Comas on Dream Shackle Geist. Only thing is that when this dies, it's a problem. But we'll have a 1 1 to block this with. And then a 1 1 to sacrifice to the Diver Scarb. Okay, maybe Diver Scarb actually. I don't think Steel Clad Spirit's all that good. Yeah, let's sacrifice that. And bounce this thing. Uh, that's not going to want tap. We'll swing for four. Oh, wait. 
He's got a reach creature. Completely, I completely forgot that. So I needed to I need to tap this guy down. <sighs> okay. Yeah. I'm not doing great. Um. So. We think Brian Comer on here. Another Brian Comer on here. Maybe we'll get two more flyers. Oh, we just emptied the graveyard, so this is actually this guy's actually getting bigger. Uh, next to combat. So now we have to tap down his reach creature and we swing in for four. And that's all. Right. Um, we can't kill the power spawn because it'll blow up my geist. Oh, and that's another huge creature. That's a wolf strike, and yeah, he's dead. Oh well. It was fun whilst it lasted. Uh. Right, yep. Yeah. May as well trade off here. Kill the bias power spawn. Uh, I guess we'll draw a, an island. Uh, let's block. Let's block this with our, our chomp blocker. So, other options we could have done. Could have waited with a dive of scab. And sacrificed a 1-1. One, one to it. And then I would have still had my 3-3 three, three creature on the ground, which could have could have been a useful blocker. Okay, we're just going to draw islands. Yeah, we've had uh, 10 lands, I think, out of 17 in 21 cards. It's not it's not the worst actually. It's obviously not great, but uh, so it's fairly statistically yeah. Uh, Normal. But I feel like this is what happens when I try and play a controlly style deck. That's the other thing, nurturing presence. Or as you draw and you don't have any creatures to put them on. That's um, the problem. Interesting, that guy actually uh, got to one power point eventually. Yeah, we can't quite assemble enough forces to um, do lethal da do much damage that was better than the first game I wasn't completely um, sort of just my strategy wasn't completely countered uh, th my theory is we drop one fear of death and we add one nurturing presence I think maybe this is the key to winning is getting out nurturing presence and pumping a creature up. Maybe that's how you win with this. But we, I, I saved a creature from a braid with my Cradle of Safety, so that was quite fun. But then he had a Wolf Strike later. I think what we're missing, we didn't pick up the Sinker Bait. 
We've only got a couple of uh, counter spells that target creatures and planeswalkers. So we've got the turn to Steel Clad Spirit. And we could Nurturing Presence him and swing in for some damage. Which seems quite good. Okay, I'm playing against a blue white deck. So this guy could be. Uh, he could have the syncopate here. We. Uh, let's go. Yeah, let's go with the binding geist first. And just hold on to the brine coma. Okay, removal on that one, that's okay. So now I can roll out my my creatures here. Brian Coma and a Lantern Bearer. I've done very, very well at drawing my creatures here because I think I only have a th have 13 in the deck. That's There's the Geist, so I've drawn five out of 13 creatures, which is very fortunate. Uh, Dream Shackle Geist. So again, he might, he has Mother up for a syncopate. Dream Shackle Geist is pretty important. Uh, or I could just do Nurturing Presence on the Brian Coma. That lets his Steel Clad Spirit attack and it leaves Cradle of Safety up, so maybe that is pretty cool. If you put this on this guy, Nurturing Presence on buying Brian Coma to make an, another creature. I don't know if this is what you're supposed to do, but it seems like the right thing to do. That should go up to 3-3, three, three, right? Okay, it went up to 2-2. Two, two. So I'm not quite sure. Because I, th I thought I've made two creatures. I suppose one was made before Nurturing Presence took effect. So um, let's swing in with everything. I guess this is what the deck is, uh, well, in my wildest dreams, this is what my, my deck is supposed to do. Um, I'll go ahead and Dream Shackle Geist. He might have the big syncopate, but at least I've still got Cradle of Safety up. See, I've got to pay three, so yeah, he got me with Geist Light Snare there. Fair enough. I'd say we don't attack with Brian Coma. Okay, he's got Supernatural Rescue, that's interesting. So, targeting that one and Lantern Bearer, okay. That gets to be a 3 4. Swing in for two. And so, uh, right. Vampire Slayer, so another creature on the ground. Cool, we have a count spell, so. Swing in in, yeah, with these ones. Don't know if you're supposed to swing in with Brian Coma here, but uh, 
May as well keep him back, I think. He's got a defense against my steel clad spirit as well. Guess what I'd be afraid of now is Hullbreaker Horror. So I can't counter that one. Okay, another Brine Coma. It means I would not be able to Siphon Essence his next thing. It would put another flyer into play. I think, yeah, on balance, end turn, we will um, keep, keep Siphon Essence Mana up. Well, we got a win. We got a win. But that was, uh, that, yeah, that was the deck outdoing itself and actually having, yeah, drew, I drew five of my 13 creatures in what, the first two or three turns. Ah, Vampire's Vengeance, nice. Okay. And we're off the mark, that's something. Okay, it's a very, uh, what they call a very reactive hand. Uh, I think we'll keep it. Um, this is useless until we get a creature. We've got perfect mana, so uh, I do not, uh, I don't mulligan very many hands that have got perfect mana. Let's see if he's got a two drop here. That's good news for me. He did not have a two drop. Now I've got Siphon Essence up. And I could probably pitch a land um, to the Blood Token. I think we go for that that island. And we could... Because uh, I've got Fear of Death. I think I'm going to go aggressive. I'm going to Go with the Binding Geist. Maybe I should just hold back. But... I've got Fear of Death, so... Okay, Ancient Lumber Knot, that's, that's not, not good. Not a good thing. Okay. Uh, in fact, it just completely counters Fear of Death, doesn't it? He doesn't care if he's got... Um, his power is very low. Okay, well, we could put Nurturing Presence on Binding Ghost. So this is, um, I talked, I said the zombie, the flying zombie deck completely countered me. The uh, the Golgari Butts deck completely counters me as well. It counters my fear, fear of death and my Binding Ghost anyway. Um, but there we go. That's, that's magic for you. So but let's put uh, Nurturing Presence on here. Which will make that a 4-2. And then we'll swing in like that for 4 damage. And produce his, his power and he will just laugh in my face. But that's okay. And end the turn there. Okay. Yeah, he's just going to ramp out some mana. I don't really want to counter that guy. Makes sense to me. Okay, Dream Shacklegeist is not bad at all. So, let's play that. Let's go to combat. This is not going to untap. Let's swing in with these two. That's 
going to not be affected by Binding Geist. It will trade off, that's okay. And we'll end the turn there. Okay, Edgar's Awakening, nice. So that, that is just coming straight back to the battlefield. Okay. Sure. Over to my turn. So I think we can we can just keep this uh, lumber knot completely locked down, can't we? That's quite good. Um. We'll swing in for four every turn. Let's see see if we can win in four turns. And I guess we could bounce Lumber Knot at the end of his turn as well. So Garda's Imprisonment, okay. How's he casting that? Oh, with um, with the Reclusive Taxidermist, okay. So we'll Cradle of Safety. Assistant specimen, that's fine. Now, he might have instant speed removal. Oh wait, I've got Hexproof till the end of turn. Okay, I, uh, I'm quite scared by the Lumber Knot, to be honest, and I, I think I want to bounce it at the end of his turn. Okay. Cool. Right. Uh, swing in for five. Yeah, we did it. We did it. That's funny. That was... I was thinking, what could, what could he do on turn four that could be annoying? I don't need to. I don't need to have counter magic up, and it's like, oh right, yeah, this is the thing that doesn't care about fear of death and binding geist. Still, that works out pretty well. I think this dream shackle geist is pretty darn good, to be honest. Just realizing I can keep a creature tapped down uh, the entire game, which um, I probably should have realized by now, but. White, we've got blue. We actually have a turn one play. Got a count spell. Got a removal. Uh, keep seven. Okay. Uh, yeah, nurturing presence just goes straight on the lantern bearer. Wing for two, and he has a clock uh, on him already. We can protect our lantern bearer. This is pretty good. Nine more turns of this. Sharpshooter gets Siphon Essenced. Drop. I reckon we can drop Fear of Death. Uh, destroy Artifact, fights a zombie. I don't have zombies, so that's okay. We're going to use the Blood Token, because he's going to... Can I tap maybe White Mana? But, you know. Drop a Fear of Death. Still Cloud Spirit, okay.
Cultural Witness. So, yeah, yeah, we could do that. Uh, so, my feeling is it's still Captain Cloud Spirit. He can trade off with a Sawblade Slinger, and I can still have Cradle of Safety Mana up. Hang on, maybe I'm getting the hang of this sort of this control deck thing. Or even better, next turn I could fear of death the slinger and swing in with still clad spirit. But we'll see what he is gonna do. Um Yeah, let's take the damage. Okay, Rural Recruit, okay. That makes a lot of things. Uh, we've got a few things in the graveyard. Obviously this will get traded off by the pig. This can get trained up by the Sawblade Slinger. Uh, I kind of don't know what to do here. Um, let's, let's go with the Fear of Death on the pig. That pig's not much good anymore. He's, he's swinging in for six next turn, but I can swing in for five now. It's going to trade off the pig. That's very reasonable. So it's not five. But he's going to do me six next turn. The rural recruit will get up to 3 3 next turn. So that, I don't know if that was a, a very good idea. In all honesty. Oh, and he's going to gain 3 life. It's not ideal. Okay. Got a skulker. Um, yeah, he has sort of out creatured me here a bit by getting to six mana. So I'm thinking we play Gutter Skulker. Swing in for three. We can double block the Hunter and then try and draw something really good that's going to save me. Oh yeah, that's a 3-3 three, three now. Well, we can trade off there and, and take 7 damage. And take uh, 6 damage. If we double block the Hunter, we take 7. Then I can... Uh, Then I can play Cruel Witness and block one of these next turn, except Rural Recruit's going to get to be 4-4. Four, four. Okay, let's, let's just trade off like this. Take 6. Let's 
see if he's got something. He has something. He has a wolf strike. Okay. And he has Valorous Stance to make that <laughs> indestructible. Of course. Okay, fine. Naturally. Right. Uh, let's play a Cruel Witness. He gets 2 2 till end of turn. Um, right, that's obviously going to be a 4 4, so it's just everything gets gets killed. So Cradle of Safety, I can make this a 4-4 to trade with the Rural Recruit. That's what I'm thinking. And chump and chump. Uh, it's a chump blocker, isn't it? Uh, oh, it, it makes two chump blockers. Basically, maybe it is the very card I need. Let's see. And if we do Lantern Bearer on it, it becomes 2 2. So maybe trade off with a Sword Blade Singer and put a Chump Block the Hunter. Let's, let's let's try that. See if that works. Oh, he's going to draw a card off this, of course. But uh, now, I guess a bounce spell would be quite good. No, going to get the planes. Okay. Ah, uh, good game. Okay, so yeah, enchantment auras. Uh, maybe I can brine coma his hunter and get a creature. Wait, I get the creature. That's sweet. Um, I don't want to make it unblockable though. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> maybe I'd get another turn. We'll see. Okay, good game. Well, we tried. We tried something different. And I think, yeah, I finished on two wins. It's not the worst in uh, Platinum Yellow. It was quite typical for game one, running into Garalf Visionary Stitcher, so all of my 1-1 one, one flying tokens run into 2-2 two, two flying zombies, basically. But uh, that's, uh, that's what they call... Murphy's Law, I think. Right. Have a look at the deck. Uh, yeah, I, I kept uh, seeing Brian Comas uh, in dra in previous drafts. Uh, not doing it. They always came later in the draft after I, after I decided what I was doing. But this draft, we got the really good Geist, the Dream Shackle Geist, first pick. So uh, it was definitely. I was already. Th I was thinking the blue-white deck might be on the cards here, and we find. I think we got. To, we got a second Brian Coma quite late, which is quite nice. Uh, let's see. So yeah, Alchemist Retrieval. That's that was pretty decent. Uh, I think you need. Yeah, definitely a good card in this deck. So it's just to s slow down your opponent. You're just going to try and overwhelm them with uh, lots of early one-one flyers. Basically, uh, Lantern Bearer actually doesn't make the biggest amount of sense in this deck because everything's almost almost everything's already got flying. But it's, it's still it's a one-one flyer for one is quite good that can come back from the graveyard and give and gives plus one plus one as well. So I think it, it's fine. Uh, Nurturing Presence is 
quite interesting. So this is basically, yeah, you get a 1-1 flyer for 2 mana, but it can it slightly pumps up the aura creature as well. Cradle of Safety is a really good uh, protection spell. Got, we managed to stop a couple of burn spells, a couple, couple of um, kill spells with this. Uh, Fear of Death. Yeah. Uh, we discovered this is not so good against a few things, like um, Ancient Lumbernaut, uh, who doesn't care about having his power reduced. And also Zombie Decks with Exploit doesn't care about this. They just sacrifice the zombie and replay it. So I feel like it, you, you look at this card and you think, yeah, that, that ought to be quite good. It takes a lot of power off the board. If I'm a control deck, that's all I want to do. I don't have to kill the creatures. But uh, the kind of nuances in this set mean sometimes this this card is not very good. But um, you, need, you need some kind of... Uh, defensive measures in the deck and this, this is this is an okay defensive measure um, I, one thing I'm missing out actually is syncopate I think that's quite a good count spell in this set so uh, you, well obviously you're count, countering anything and you and you're exiling it as well so uh, you know uh, disturbed creatures aren't, aren't less of a big deal there's lots of there's lots of raised dead effects as well uh, so we can just remove something so that's that's i did have an opportunity to pick one but i, I went for something else uh steel clad spirit three three for two mana it's pretty decent um defender so it's another defensive measure uh and sometimes he'll get to attack with this deck because we're doing we are playing enchantments uh, a couple of binding geists again these quite good but yeah they weren't so good against the ancient lumber knot and exploit decks, so uh, that is that is the drawback. Dream Shackle Geist, absolutely fantastic. Uh, so you can uh, you can take out a blocker, or you can keep something tapped down forever, something dangerous. Like uh, in the um, yeah, I keep talking about the ancient lumber knot. We actually did win that game because we, we could keep our Dream Shackle Geist alive, keep the lumber knot tapped down, and keep um, slamming in. A couple of siphon essence um, counter creature. Or Planeswalker, so yeah, it's like an essence scatter. Uh, but you get a blood; to it's for for three mana. But you get a blood token, so that's quite that's quite relevant for uh, digging through and getting to your cards. I didn't really have any other um, card draw oh, apart from, of course, Cruel Witness. I don't. Th I think we only triggered this once. Uh, yeah, we didn't we didn't make the most of this, unfortunately. Uh, Wanderlight Spirit, yeah, two three fly for three, pretty decent. Brian Coma. Doesn't actually have flying, it's just a 1-1, one, one, uh, but it makes a 1-1 one, one flyer. And it makes more flyers every time you, you target it with an aura. I wasn't sure whether to, sometimes I wasn't sure whether to target this with the Nurturing Presence, or put Nurturing Presence on a flyer. Maybe chump block with this guy, and then play it on a creature and play Nurturing Presence. I think that's that's probably, probably better, having the Nurturing Presence on a flyer, I think... Um, yeah, this is maybe better in its aura form. Uh, Cruel Witness, yeah, 3-3 three, three, fly for 4, pretty good. I thought I'd try Gutter Skulker because it's unblockable, 3-3. Three, three. It's a cheaper version, I guess, of the Dreadlight Monstrosity, and uh, it can turn into an aura as well, make something unblockable. And then finally Diver Scar, a uh, bit of uh, exploit. Sacrifice it can um, bounce something into the library, probably to the top of the library, uh, and maybe a good way to sacrifice your Brian Coma or your Lantern Bearer. So yeah, pretty decent. Uh, yeah, because we're just kind of just splashing white. I only I went for this is the recommendation from uh, from the uh, the land suggester. Seven planes, ten islands, and I, I kind of agree with that. You don't want to have too few planes. You kind of want to be able to cast your Brian Coma maybe um, as late, no later than turn four, let's say. Uh, I think that, I think that's right. Actually, no. The uh, I'll just check that again. With seven, it's actually yeah, turn four. 
you should be able to cast it at 90% of the time. Which seems about, seems fine, seems about right. Anyway, um, that's the mana curve there, pretty pretty low to the ground. Just 12 creatures, so yeah. thought this one, this kind of deck archetype was worth an idea. Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting, quite fun. Not my usual kind of thing, to be honest, but uh, definitely worthwhile. Uh, yep, yeah, I think that is the video, uh, so thanks for watching.